Welcome back to Sunday Vibes 1 and oh, we are back in Clubhouse 5 just off of Leicester Square in Chinatown, London. The best place to watch your sports right here in the capital. Uh, look who's joined me for his final ever Sunday Vibes. It's Patrick Van Straten. How are you, mate? Emotional uh, times? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a momentous day. You know, my last Sunday Vibes, you've had your first cappuccino. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it, we're all growing up. We're all moving on. Uh how are you, mate? Yeah, not bad, thank you, mate. Not too bad. Sad day, a real sad day. It is a bit of a sad day. Obviously, you can it's see right. from the title, we are going to be discussing football, but we're also going to do a little special segment. Pat put out a tweet, uh, I think, during the week. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through some of the questions you guys have for Pat as he looks back over his eight years at the club mm. slash Football Daily. Mm. You know, icon. Uh, very simple. Football Daily icon indeed. But we're going to start by talking Wonder Kids because there have been some amazing performances over this Champions League week and at the start of this season from youngsters around Europe. What we're going to do is I am going to act as a super agent, effectively. These guys are going to pitch position by position, so defender, midfielder, forward, a player for me to sign. I must choose who I'm going to sign. Now... We've kind of missed out, and deliberately so, you know, the likes of Jude Bellingham in here. Pedri, about, Gavi. You know, they're almost too established yeah. at this stage. You they know, are, yeah. But, you know, Bellingham is no longer a wonder kid. He, he is just an established One of the best superstar of world. world football. Yeah. So we won't be talking about the likes of Bellingham, Pedri, some of the more high-profile names across Europe. We're looking for some gems, although I, I've seen the list, and there are, you know, one of Pat's players is quite established in terms of playing for a super club right now. Uh, should we start with defenders, though, gentlemen? Who's pitching yes. me the first defender for me to sign for my agency, the Joe Tomlinson Agency? <laughs> what an original name. Uh, Pat, as it's your last, why don't you go first, mate? Uh, all right. Um, well, I've gone for Scalvini okay. out of Atalanta. Um, he's got 50 Serie A starts already, so you could argue that he's pushing yeah. the one who could think, but I still don't think he's a household name, and he's a 19-year-old centre-back. Yeah. And... While this is slowly changing, centre-backs of that age getting regular minutes outside of maybe Ligue 1 are pretty rare. Yeah, um, So definitely. I do think that it's kind of reasonable. And I think it's also worth pointing out that Atalanta, over the last however many years, basically my entire time at FD, have been like an attacking powerhouse. But this season, they've kind of reinvented themselves as much more of a defensive side. Mm. Um, what's been powering them this season is how good their defence has been. So there are seven sides in Serie A that have created more XG, but only Juve and Inter have allowed less than Atalanta. And then only fractionally. I think they've allowed something like six and a half XG in nine games. So they are an elite defensive side right now. And Scalvini is a big part of that. You know, like he, he is 19, but he's six foot four. Mm. So there, there may even be Big some boy. more height in there. Yeah. Um, but I also think when you look at him play and when you look at his statistical profile, it's very similar to what we saw from someone like Saliba when he was in France. Um, Note that down, Arsenal fans. Like, Pat just says Scalvini is better than Saliba. Well, you know, he, he when you're playing in a, one of those back three systems, then you often do get the chance to kind of be a bit yeah. more expansive. But it also tends to mean that you're expected to defend in wide areas. And I think that's now really, really good training for a super club mm. where often fullbacks are stepping into midfield or pushing mm -hmm. up. And suddenly as a centre-back, you don't just have to cover like this small area. You have to cover from kind of the centre of the pitch to the halfway line, yeah. which is the kind of thing that fullbacks used to do. So these guys are so athletic now. Um, but he's winning the ball five times a game. So he's super, Great. super active. He's... Tackle success rate has gone up every year. It's now over 70%, which is elite. Is that a good thing for a centre-back to be that active in play? Not for the side, maybe, but, but it's, a, him, it's good yeah, for like showing true. how good he is. I'd say that, yeah, exactly. If you're, if you're having to defend all the time and you're a centre-back, you're going to get beaten sometimes. Yeah. You're going to give up probably red cards or at least get like some pretty bad fouls at times. That's going to happen. So I would argue that it's maybe not the most sustainable strategy mm. for Atalanta. But... If you're scouting Scalvini, then it's great because you get to see him do loads of defending every game yeah. and loads of passing. He's at six progressive passes a game, which again wow. is very, very good for a centre-back. Uh, he wins two-thirds of his aerial duels, as you'd expect for a guy of this size. But again, that's quite rare, even among tall teenagers, because teenagers just aren't that developed. Yeah. Mm. And they also haven't usually... Um, you know, gain the ability to a high level to like ju going on here, judge yeah. when they should be jumping, you know, to judge how to use their bodies, to judge what they can get away with, you yeah. know, the little pulls and shifts Agreed. you can do. A bit of experience. So, and, and also, you know, there are just these signs that he's improving, not only the tackle success, but he's halved his number of fouls for last year 
since last year while winning the ball more. Yeah. He mops up tons and tons of loose balls, which again means that, you know, when the ball is breaking loose, he's covering a load of ground. I just think that he's... Right now, he, is there is there a better teenage centre-back in the world? I It's hard to think of a teenage centre-back who's playing for a good side mm, as consistently to such a high level. There are guys we like, like Usman Diamond or whatever, but like he isn't really playing yet and he's yeah. only just in Portugal and that league is nowhere near as good. So... I don't know. I'm very, very bullish on Scalvini. How old's Levi? He's not. Is he's not a teenager any longer? Is it? He's 22. Levi Colwell. I think he's 20. 20, 20, 20 maybe. So yeah, I think he's a very realistic shout. I also 19, 20. Do oh, like yeah. the fact you know, as the agent in this situation, he's playing for Atalanta because we know that they have a proven track record of being open to do business at the right price, yeah. and that price tends to be quite lofty, especially dealing with Premier League clubs. You look at Rasmus Hoyland leaving the club in the summer for 64, rising to 70 million. We've seen Ahmad Diallo go to Manchester United in the past as well. And I kind of agree, six foot four, 19-year-old centre-backs do not grow on trees. Mm. Um, and especially doing it right now in Syria is very impressive. You know, I, I have openly derided Syria <laughs> at times, you know, much to Henry Hill's uh, amusement but you know it is an extremely competitive league especially at the top end it's right? the second best league in Europe yeah and comfortably some of the attacks in that league you look at the likes of Napoli's last season AC Milan this season Inter. Juventus Inter like they're, <laughs> they're very very difficult to play against and also in the old days we used to be like wow you know Italian centre-backs and there were great Italian yeah. centre-backs mm. but they also had a more straightforward job because in Definitely. those days teams played more defensively. So in a defensive side, it's actually sometimes quite hard to gauge how good a centre back is. It's like buying a centre back from, you know, like Sean Dyche's Burnley. Yeah. It was always hard to know how they'd scale into a more aggressive side. Whereas when you when you've got Syria as it currently is, with loads of pressing, with up and down attacks, with often like kind of <laughs> I don't know, barely their midfields, mm. you end up with centre backs who are quite easy to judge yeah. because you're seeing them having to defend in space. You're seeing kind of the worst of them. So if you can protect them a bit more, you can get more. Yeah. So I don't know. I look at someone like Scalvini and I think, I don't know, if you're looking if you're looking for a centre-back and you're, oh, I don't know, maybe Spurs? How does he transfer to a four, though? Would that be a worry? Maybe, but I'd say that normally in a four, you do get a little bit more protection. I'd say, mm. I'd say it normally depends. These days in a four, what tends to happen is that you're still functioning in a three. It's just that instead of it being three centre-backs, it's a midfielder dropping between yeah. the two centre-backs. Yeah, I but know what you mean. Everyone, there aren't many top, th top clubs playing the three at the moment outside of Italy. No, but I'd say that Arsenal often defend in a three, Man City defend in a three, um, yeah. PSG often defend in a three. Like... Bayern Munich defending. There are many there are many examples of centre backs who can do equally as well in a four as as they do in a three. Yeah, I think I think it's this classic thing of like in possession versus out of possession yeah. formation. Yeah. And I think now most big sides play either kind of a two three five or a three two five out of pos uh, in possession. Yeah, and he's so, so young he can adapt. Like he's got yeah exactly. Uh, yeah, he can learn. He, he's got so many physical gifts that I'm not worried about you finding a use for him. Okay. But don't buy him if you don't have a use for him. <laughs> I guess is what I'd say. True. Okay, Scalvini. Up first, you're gonna have to go some to beat. Yeah, I mean, it's probably maybe not the note hasn't got the notoriety of uh, Pat's suggestion, but I've gone for a player RB Salzburg, uh, a team which okay. is normally riddled with wonder kids. Riddled, riddled, riddled with them. Riddled with them. Not <laughs> yes, sure. it's a guy called Samson Beidou who is 19. He turns 20 in March. Uh, but this year, he's kind of made his way into that first team. We saw elements of it last year, but he's now kind of one of the bigger names. He didn't play on Tuesday night in the Champions League against Inter Milan um, for reasons that I'm not so sure of. Maybe it is just a kind of big, big occasion. They didn't want to risk him just for that. However, he did play in the friendly that they played earlier this, this year, and he scored in a 4-3 loss, I think, as well. Uh, but a little bit different in a friendly. Now, he's six foot two, right-footed, um, and again... Smaller. So, so smaller, but can, still, but can still be... Be growing, can still man. be growing at, nine, man. Yeah. at 19 years old. Uh, he can definitely still be growing. He's already captained the side as well at 19 years it's old, positive. um, which just shows I think if you're doing that at that age, like Jesus, the leadership you've already got there is ridiculous. Now, he carries the ball fantastically well, especially into midfield. Uh, I think when you watch his highlights, one of his key assets is kind of picking up that ball at the back and just taking it in and maybe even joining midfield um, at times. He also may be smaller than Pat's guy, but 
He scored two goals already in eight games in the Austrian Bundesliga. The guy is fantastic. Yeah, is What's his nationality? So he is of Ghanaian descent, but he's playing for Austria. He's just okay. got called up oh, for the really? Austria. Just got called up for the Aust- uh, Austrian national team in October. Ralph he's played. Rangnickball. He's played. Of, he's played every youth level for Austria as well. He's born in Austria, mm. but he's got Ghanaian descent. I think a lot of I saw online us, could help us from a visa point of view. Yeah, but yeah. I think right now as well, he's. I think because sure, he sure. played against. That, no, seriously, it's a fact. He played against Belgium in their latest um, mm. international game, so they I lost. think he now can't. He now can't. Um, yeah, although I think, play for it was I think they yeah. represent, rep- represent your nation competitively three or four times. Okay, like, so it's like slightly changed. What well, interesting. Either way, I don't. Yeah. If he feels Austrian, he's going to play for Austria. I mean, like he's every every the, youth level. He's born just, in Austria. There's a lot of appeal to playing for the Ghanaian national team. The Ghanaian national team, and it's very I'm going to come on to this later. It's in a really good moment. But. Just just a point, by the way. Just a slight tangent on Ralph. Rangnick's time uh, in charge of Austria uh, obviously done a pretty fantastic job there and I believe he's only picking players that play in Austria I don't know whether that's <laughs> well, true that's but I ridiculous. think surely Alaba has he going. heard of David Alaba I don't surely I, I'm not 100% I think David Alaba is going I've read a tweet I've read a tweet I've read a tweet, <laughs> I've, read a tweet. <laughs> I've read a tweet I can't clarify or confirm anything can we check their last game to see if Alaba was Alaba in the squad was he, was Alaba was in the squad was he, was he playing yeah Alaba was he, was he playing and what about like all the other yeah. good Austrians? Don't players. ask me, mate. I saw like, a tweet and I believed Baumgartner it. Baumgartner and Posh Sabitza and in midfield. Like, <laughs> complete, <laughs> Total waffle. waffle. Oh dear. Anyway, waffle. okay. okay. Well, Ignore me. Let's, let's get the most out. informed channel yeah, yeah, on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, well, we were uh, uh, making claims. Let's go back to Beatty then, um, who not only is really good in the box and attacking sense with his head, but also great defensively, winning him think about 65 percent of his aerial duels. Yeah. Which again, at this age, yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. Can improve for sure yeah, as well. Austria, um, where everyone's also a teenager. He's also rapid. He is so quick, okay. ridiculously quick. He's got a great, like, I think we've seen it slightly with Spurs and Mickey van der Ven so far, that kind of, well, I mean, you see it with Kyle Walker all the time where he allows the defenders to kind of have maybe a little bit more space to knock mm. that ball further forward because he knows he's got the pace to try and get them. He's also physically huge as well. He's just that kind of perfectly built centre-back that has all of those elements of strong, great in the air, but also rapid as well. I felt like back in the day, you couldn't have all three of those elements. Um, mm. So, yeah, he's... He's not maybe got the experience so far, I'd say, of Pat's suggestion. But I do think he's somebody that we're going to be hearing a lot more of. It wouldn't surprise me if he got a move this summer to, to Leipzig. a well to Leipzig or to a Bundesliga side. We've obviously to seen Leipzig. Dortmund. It's gonna be, it's gonna be we've seen nice. Dortmund make that transfer as well. Leipzig themselves have some fantastic centre backs who will probably get picked up and looked at as well. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me if he comes in as that rotation to to be that next guy. He did sign a brand new contract, or really his first professional contract, um, to 2027. I think means nothing last though, within year. the Red Bull group, does it? It's very true. It's like the very transfer true. of a phone contract in there. <laughs> yeah, very very true. I mean, his passing is also pretty decent. I think he averages about 86 uh, percent pass accuracy a game. Like they're all normally going forward, happy to play the long ball. He's somebody that I think we've got to keep an eye on, and we'll be hearing a lot more of him. Over okay. the next couple of years. He is the kind of player who, if you're like a mid-table Premier League mm. side, you basically could go for him now or you'll probably never get him. Yeah. Mm. As in like, he'll go to Leipzig and then he'll go to a big club if he's good. Whereas if you're like, who's a good example? I mean, someone like Everton even, who I think are playing like a mid-table side and need... I mean, they've got great centre-back in their own right, actually. Like, sure, but I mean, I, I guess the uh, youngster. maybe a Brentford or something then. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You need a centre-back. Yeah, right. This is this is a good time to take a gamble on someone like this because worst case, you can probably sell him to like the Bundesliga or something for about what you'd pay. Yeah. Best case, he's amazing. I think from my agency's perspective, though, I really... They're both on the market, we're saying here. I, I'm struggling to look past Galvini. Like, Bruh. I think he's got to be. I think your guy... Looks like an amazing prospect, but Atalanta, I've seen them sell big. I've seen the agency fees being commanded mm. for certain players here. And not that this is a money grab. It, I mean, it's partially a money grab. <laughs> it's but, Italian football. Um, so. It's Italian football. And I'm I'm taking Scalvini. Let's go on to midfielders <laughs> then. Um, yes. <laughs> um, so Zach, you want to go first? I'll kick things off. I'll kick things off because I think Pats is quite a well-known one that it'll be tough to try and get him a transfer anyway if you're but thinking about child. money. My but we'll, we'll get on to him. We'll get on to him. Mm. Yeah, because my one is a little bit older. He is 20. So that's fine. Man. Ancient, no, really, unexpected. in today's In the Wonder Kid world. Exactly. But he's a guy called Fermin Lopez uh, who had a fantastic game 
game last night. We recorded this obviously on a Thursday, actually. He played in the Champions League against Shakhtar the Nesk, uh, scored a goal, should have probably scored another goal that was ruled offside and then hit the woodwork as well. Uh, he won man of the match for Barcelona in that game. And his story is super interesting because last year for Barcelona, he was loaned out to a third division side. He was playing left wing, um, sometimes left centre mid, but actually was more of a of the front three. Uh, did pretty well, but was in the third division of Spain. Um, came back, and I think it felt, at least at the time, that his his career at Barcelona may not be going to where he would hope, to the likes of Gavi and Pedri. But then Xavi, in a training session, saw something and said, uh, and said that we want to take him to the US preseason tour, and I want to give him a chance. He then played against Real Madrid in the El Clasico and was amazing. In the preseason tour. In the preseason yeah. tour. He impressed Xavi, and Xavi said, we're not selling him, we're not getting rid of him, I want him in the team. He's since been in the team, and he's been fantastic. He's been able to play, he because of his experience in that forward line, he is able to go left wing if he's needed. He's normally more of a, a 10, but can play right centre mid. That's how Xavi's used him as well in this Barcelona side. And while, say, Pedri and Gavi are more... Guys who are fantastic kind of in possession, maybe a little bit deeper as well. This guy is kind of occupying just behind the, the front line. He's a bit more of an attacking uh, midfielder. He's more than happy to have a shot outside the box. He's more than happy to um, kind of dribble past players. He's not necessarily somebody that wants to kind of keep ticking play over. I think he leaves that to Frankie de Jong, to Gavi, to Pedri, to kind of do that side of things. Um and so, yeah, he's, he was really good. I mean, him playing yesterday in the Shatton Nest for, in the Champions League to win man of the match, 82 minutes. Um, he got his goal, created three chances, actually hit the woodwork twice. And as I said, that goal that was ruled out, three dribbles completed, 100% of his tackles. Um, and he made eight rec recoveries as well. Now, as I said, in terms of his future at Barcelona... Especially at the moment with La Masia, it just seems like they've got another regen coming out and can play Masia, wherever they need to. La Masia Remontada it is. has been it crazy. Is. It's been cool. fantastic. Yeah, though it still kind of remains to be seen how good these guys are. Well, yeah, to a level, but like Gavi, at least. We'll get Gavi. Like, yeah, yeah. Lamina Mal. Are we not going to... Sure, discuss but, sure, Lamina but two Mal. years ago, we were like, Ansu Fati is going to be a world beater. And maybe he still mm, will be because yeah. he's still very young. But we also don't know. I mean, Balde is playing very regularly. Yeah. Gavi's playing. Pedri's been injured for a long time. Pedri isn't really there an academy yeah. graduate. But like, they are bringing through youngsters. But at the same time, it's difficult to know the difference basically between youngsters who are good enough to help you like batter Spanish sides and youngsters who are good enough to help you be one of the dominant sides on the continent, which is the level that we're talking about when we're talking about La Masia. I agree, what? but you, you look at Yamal, for instance, yeah, yeah, we yeah. haven't discussed, I, I, so we I'm should probably spend a bit of time advice. about it. Yeah, like we haven't picked him just because he done it on is... the international stage. Yeah, like, he's, he's a freak. Clearly, you know, the next sort of star, especially like commercially, he's 16. coming out of Barcelona, and obviously he's, he's, he's a 16. fantastic player as well. But neither of you have picked it. No, I just felt like, again, he was somebody that I feel has been spoken about a lot recently. And is, again, he is 100% a wonder kid, without a doubt. He is still a wonder but kid. It, I would describe your mouth as a wonder kid. Yeah, definitely. No, 100%. 16, but, but like, like it was just, it's just almost, I felt like he was almost too known. And already. some people like, have been like, talked about so, on, a, on, the, on the channel. Like, yeah, we haven't come on to forwards yet. That was, a, ta well, that so was like, a tapping open goal, man. Mm. Well, I've also gone for Would you be able to sell him? Would you be able <laughs> so, to sell him for, for much? Like, in terms of, would he be leaving? No, but would he be leaving Barcelona? Is he going to be getting you that money? He's not a great candidate for you. You're going to have to get all your money from, like, oh, can we get the cover anyway? FIFA. Yeah, mm, exactly. Not necessarily. I think Barcelona, you know, strange things have happened in them selling some of their best players. I don't know. They mm. haven't sold on Ansu. Like, they can sell Ansu. They've also just had that other kid. They'll sell before they get They've got that other kid that was also coming through. It's like 17. Ed, uh, Edu or something like that. Not Edu. Um, yes, Edu. The guy that scored on the weekend with his first yeah, touch. First touch. I completely forgot his name. Um, but anyway, back to Lopez really quickly. Like, their midfield at Barcelona right now has a lot of midfielders who are in that, like, first and second phase of football. They don't necessarily, I think, have a lot of guys that well, can help. Be. He is, but as we mentioned, does, injury does issues, like, them. it's been a bit of, like, no wonder he's played so much football, Barely he's now played. getting injured. Whereas Lopez, like, his best asset is that final third, that, that you know, third phase of football to either take the shot or to play in that, like, last minute <laughs> ball to, to Lewandowski. Yeah, sorry for the noise. Um, and so, yeah, I, I do <laughs> wonder a little bit on what's going to happen for his future. So there might be money there to be made if he's sold. Um, but, yeah. He's somebody that kind of went from no future at all at Barcelona to now being the guy that's winning the man of the matches in the Champions League. Okay, for me, Fair point. I mean, I've seen yours written down in front of me, Pat. Is this cheating? He's 17. 
How can it be cheating? You're like, oh, well, obviously he's an nailed on superstar. He's 17. <laughs> I know, he's... but he's just playing consistently for PSG. Sure, but I mean, I think that even if you'd brought this he's guy up like three weeks... It's Emery, by the way. <laughs> even if you brought up Warren Zaire Emery like three weeks ago, then people would have been like, oh yeah, like we're starting to hear about him. But mm. it feels like every week his reputation is growing. I mean, yeah, like, true. last night got it's two true. assists in yeah. the Champions League. Well, yeah. there are people who will have heard his name for the first time. But I still don't think that people necessarily understand what he's doing mm. as in like there are young players like for example like rico lewis at man city people like talk about him really highly he's obviously super talented but i but i mean like one of the reasons arsenal were able to beat man city in that game was because rico lewis was playing that's not a knock on him it's just yeah, to say that he's, position he's also. not at the level like obviously if they'd had rodri and kovacic in the midfield instead of like kovacic rico lewis yeah like they would have been better uh -huh. whereas warren zaire emery is the key man in PSG's midfield right now. And I think this is the most functional, I've said it already, PSG side that we've seen for a while. I don't... We had our misgivings about Ugarte last season. Mm. And Ugarte kind of looks like what we expected, which is like a perfectly reasonable destroyer, but maybe a little bit cumbersome in possession. Mm. Yeah. But Zaire Emery has allowed them to... They've lost Marco Verratti, yeah. who has been one of the outstanding all-round midfielders in the world over the last 10 years. Yeah. You know, without missing a beat. And it's because Zaire Emery... He's winning the ball back about three times a game and his tackle success has jumped up from like 30% to 60%. So he looks like someone who's gaining that game reading ability, that physical ability. Um, his passing is absolutely yes. unbelievable. He's at like 92% pass accuracy this season while passing the ball into the final third eight times a game. Although numbers do get juiced heavy at PSG because they are just... Well, sure, but his pass numbers are still pretty close to Verratti and his pass numbers are still way better than someone and like Verratti. And he's doing it in the I, Champions I think he's League. a fantastic player. I, think I, 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 I know what you're saying, but like these numbers are still better than other people at the same club who are more experienced. Yeah. And he's 17. Like, so even if, even if you are getting your numbers juiced by playing for a dominant side, to be passing forward and passing forward effectively that much yeah. while maintaining a 92% pass accuracy is super rare. Yeah. Normally, if you're passing forward a lot, you misplace a lot of passes because that's just how it works. Um, but he's also carrying the ball forward as well. He's incredibly strong on the ball. Like He's really hard to knock off it. His, his assist for Mbappe last yeah, night. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay, it's one of those assists where you pass the ball to Mbappe outside the box and he yeah. goes and scores. But the thing that's impressive about it is that somebody basically bumps into him and tries to take him. Like yeah. Tiani, Tiani Reynders is him. trying to take him down and he just shrugs him off keeps going, plays a perfectly weighted pass, got two assists last yeah. night, also would have had another one. I think he maybe played the pass for Dembele's disallowed. Better in a three, though, check. last night, with Vitinha in there as well, than when they went to St. James's Park and played that ridiculous 44, where he was up against Longstaff and just getting run all over. Yeah, though, again, I do think that game like slightly faster than Newcastle. But, I, but yeah, they got overrun in midfield. So badly, like, yeah. That's how it goes, but... That's okay. Everyone, like Newcastle are playing amazingly well this season yeah. and their midfield is horrible for even the, the best sides who've been playing together for Great. years to come up against. I, I think almost everyone's better in a three right now. Mm. Yeah. Like, almost yeah, every yeah, major yeah, side, yeah. again, it's kind of like the centre-back thing. Almost every major side, one way or another, has three people in midfield, even if they're not like designated central midfielders. Either a centre-back steps up or a full-back steps up yeah. or a number 10 drops deep or whoever it is. I, I think Zaire Emery is just he just looks like a number eight like a a ready-made mm. number eight he plays like he's kind of 23 yeah which in a 17 year old is pretty scary stuff yeah, and as well and psg have been producing talent for ages it hasn't got in their first team this could be a guy who becomes like the sort of franchise player for them and reconnects them to the yeah. city yeah the fans so, have been crying out for that as well so i think zaire emery matters even more than his production on the pitch i think zaire emery matters in that he's an example of Enrique, Luis Enrique building a functional side yeah. and an example of PSG finally saying, we are going to make a commitment to bring through French talent. And if he ends up being the poster boy for that, then it will be more meaningful to them than just, you know, like another league and title. Yeah. And they're certainly trying to do that. It's like clearly happening, isn't it? With the return, you know, or not the return, but return to France anyway, of Ousmane Dembele, Randall Kovamuani coming back. Like clearly sure. they are trying mm. to build a much more French-based spine. Um, and I mean, when you add Xavi Simmons, obviously Dutch, but back to this side, like some young talent in that PSG side, pretty scary. Um, yeah. No doubt here I'm going for Zaire Emery. You're going 2-0 down, Shalab. Um, I'm afraid he just is the guy. How's, like, he make, how's he making you the money, then? 
How what do you mean? He's mean? like, neither of these guys are going to make me no cash, but at least Zaire Emery is going to get paid. Zaire Emery is going to get paid. No, Zaire Emery will get, 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 get a contract renegotiation in this yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. When like you're 17 years old and you're, exactly. you'll be earning like 5k a week, they'll put him on like 100k this season. And That's a big but, but Barcelona can't afford 10k a week, man. Like, <laughs> we, we, we exactly. So they'll, they'll sell him. Yeah. They'll sell him. They'll sell him. You know who you want to be in with if you're an agent? PSG. Yeah, <laughs> because they're going to be like, oh, do you want to just like own a bit of like yeah. guitar? And you're like, yeah, sure. Uh, the West Side. Forwards. Okay, now I can kind of accept the other two going, that's fine. This guy, I think you have to be taking on, Joe. It's ridiculous. Is it going to be a Chelsea player? It is technically oh, a Chelsea player. Yeah. He's 16 years old. He's already playing for his national team. 16. Oh. 16. 16. Your mum still buys his trousers. Mom's trousers. Um, yeah, no, as you mentioned, like, so Lamin Yamal. No idea what it's between us. Lamin Yamal is somebody, we, obviously, another guy that's 16. I, I just thought personally, he was too big of a profile already, but whatever. Mm. Uh, but this guy, Kendry Payers, is somebody. Another that, of the Brazilian regions you found. He's Ecuadorian. Um, <laughs> so not quite Brazilian, uh, but he's 16. <laughs> left okay, so well, well, that also makes it less impressive that he's playing for his national team. It's like, not no too bad. He's 16 no years old. Ecuador, but it's not quite the same thing as playing for Brazil at 16. Why did he he's, really? Is he playing in Brazil? He's playing in Ecuador. Okay. He's playing. Ecuador. And also because I think Chelsea like picked up about Signed six. A lot. Yeah, Gabriel is somebody that uh, he, we got. You know, he's playing in the uh, league. <laughs> but yes, anyway. Now, he's playing for Independiente, um, who are currently top of the league. He's a, an attacking midfielder, but can play on either flank. He's left-footed, good on set pieces, and he is a ridiculous dribbler. But he's doing this for the national team in, South, in, the, Copa, uh, in the Libertadores, in the World Cup qualifying. He's just played in the mm. World Cup qualifying for mm. Ecuador mm. against teams like Colombia, um, wow. against teams... Come on, sorry. come on, <laughs> sorry, come on. He's def- no, 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 no. That is pretty, no, pretty is strong. Impressive. How much did Chelsea pay goals. for him? Chelsea I've, got, have paid, I've got almost no caps. Chelsea have paid seventeen point so, five yeah. million pounds for him. That is hefty. Which is a yeah, lot they've of money. They've signed, they've signed <laughs> 15 Brazilian 17. It's ridiculous. Now he can't Why join, have you paid now like he a championship join, prize for a kid out of Ecuador? Now he he can't, must be lethal. He can't. Yeah, if you look at his highlights, they're actually, they're ridiculous. They're at, they remind me a little oh, bit oh, of when, do you remember when Neymar was in uh, uh, oh, playing the Santos. Oh, careful. Uh, I yes, walk I, up I, this. No, no, no. But you know, you know when he's like playing against like farmers? You know when he's playing against farmers, he's just like dribbling past about four different players. Four players and then like banging it in from 30 yards out. He reminds me of Neymar. Anyway, if you look at his highlights, they are they are very very fun to watch. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, no. In the World Cup qualifying so far for Ecuador, he's got two goal involvements in three games. In the Under Twenty World Cup this summer, he had four goal involvements. He's got a good passing range. He's now the second youngest South American to ever play international football. Which the one wow. ahead of him is Diego Maradona. Um, and he's I mean, also that's great. That's great. That's great. That is a great. <laughs> that, that, he is that, also that is good. He is also the youngest ever goal scorer in Comnibol World Cup qualifiers as well. At just 16, Two fantastic 16 stats years old. Um, now, yeah, it's brilliant to see that he's already playing senior football consistently. Now, he won't join up for, with Chelsea until he's 18 years old, which is 2025, yeah. the summer of 2025. So not this summer, oh, that's next so summer. Far away. However, this summer, I think he is going to be uh, playing. He might be coming to Chelsea to train for them in the preseason. And so I've already them. lost out on my cash then because he's gone to Chelsea. He's on a 15-year contract. I don't know what his contract length is. To be well, fair, it will right be now, ten so years. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, exactly. um, however, he is somebody that we'll be hearing a lot of, and I think we're just keep mm. going to keep seeing things on Twitter of him scoring from forty yards out, thirty yards out of his left foot. Mm. He is bit of an really, really, um, yeah, a bit of Endrick, exactly that. I mean, but before he's Chelsea, attacking, but he's an attacking mid. He's a ten. He's a ten. Yeah, no can right. play right wing. Can play left wing. Um, it's and a useful type. he can. Uh, before Chelsea got him, United were after him. Bayern Munich sure. were after him. A lot of these clubs. There also, there also might be. Um, you'd imagine that they'll give him a loan to like yeah. a, a, a more. I wonder if next league, yeah. which might be where you get a little payout there. I wonder if next year they somehow Some figure out a way deals. to to move him to maybe. I don't know how quite because obviously he can't come to Europe. But I wonder if he can move to a South American club. So you I wonder if maybe, maybe they try and you, uh, you'll be able to loan him to Spain. That's what you think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Normally, so there you go, norm- then. normally it's okay. I think I think normally visas are workable. Let's say, okay. Uh, in Spain. Okay, so I wonder if maybe, yeah, maybe that will happen next year where you see him playing a little bit of a, of a higher level, um, or even yeah, that. Yeah. Or I was, I was even going to say Brazil or Argentina. I was going to say Brazil or Argentina. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So maybe there's something there. Okay. And he obviously, I He's don't know so what wages. He's so young that he could have like. Four I'm not going to lie. I have seen a few Twitter highlights. Of he is outrageous. Well, and the goals are 
yeah, ridiculous, but equally. Okay. But Inequitable. he's creative as well, man. Like, he's super creative. Uh, have you got anybody who's not playing in Ecuador? Yes. I've got Abdul Fatawu Isahaku. I don't know if United I pronounced his Kaseda, name correctly, remember. but he's like a Ghanaian teenager and he was hyped as like the next great player out of Ghana. Went to uh, Sporting CP yeah. last summer. Not the one just gone, the one before. And now he's on loan at <laughs> Leicester in the championship right now. Oh, really? 19 years old, but already has 14 caps for Ghana, which I think is highly impressive. That's a lot. Especially because Ghana, like... Ghana are a really solid side and historically have managed to play like quite attractive football mm. as well. And I'd say quite winger-based football as well. Um, but yeah, on loan at Leicester, he's played six games so far this season. He's got a couple of goal involvements. But I think that more are going to come pretty quickly because he just looks a match yeah. for championship defenders. And Leicester are going to win the league with 144 points. Sure, and, and their wingers are not like lights out wingers. Like Steffi Mavidili has been good, but Steffi Mavidili is like 25 years old and is not like going to become a superstar. Um, it's probably just not going to happen. Uh, so I do think that there are kind of like minutes to be had for him. And if you look at his underlying numbers, two shots a game, 1.8 key passes in a proper league, like the championship, the championship's ability to produce proper players yeah. has got better and better and better it's so strong, over the last few it? years. It's, it's so really, strong. really strong. And he's also passing into the boxes, two, into the box two and a half times a game. Now, if you pass in, that's elite. If you pass into the box that much, eventually you're going to be creating more chances, getting more assists. It's just how it works. There's nobody who passes into the box that much who doesn't get assists. Players who pass into that bo the box that much are like Trent and Odegaard and people like that. Um, he's also hardworking, wins the ball back a couple of times a game, you know, kind of like Sadio Mane level, like ball winning. Uh, and his dribbling this season is really exciting. He's completing three and a half dribbles a game, but with over 50%... Uh, success which is something that we don't tend to see in young players like if you're if you complete that many dribbles normally it's because you're constantly 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 trying and to be doing it as a teenager in a tough league mm. in a league that's new to you is pretty impressive he's also carrying the ball into the box two and a half times a game which again is elite so if you're constantly dribbling into the box and constantly <laughs> constantly passing into the box mm. and getting off a couple of shots this is a recipe for you to turn into a serious player. And when you're already at kind of 0.4 XG after the first six games, you would hope that over the course of the season, if that ticks up, if he can add half a shot a game, suddenly you're talking about a player with incredible potential. Uh, are, are we talking about juice numbers here, though? Because no minutes. He's got reasonable minutes. He's got reasonable. He's played six games. Like yeah. that's that's. It's not but how many of them are sub appearances coming on? It's tired defenses. Sure, but I mean, not, not meaning to take anything away from him here, but sure. Yeah. But it's a, it's a long season, so I I would say that you know we've got quite a bit of the season mm. to get a real sense of him, and he's still somebody who you'd want to sign up. I think yeah. you know, like he's coming from, he's got obviously great international pedigree already. He was signed up by a club which has like an extremely robust youth scouting policy and sporting CP. He's now at a club where he's clearly going to get chances and he's going to also train in a style mm. which matches that of big teams. Like he's playing for a team now that have 60% possession uh, where he's constantly tasked with going up against defences that are going to sit deep. Yeah. So you can say his numbers are juiced as in he's going to get a lot of the ball. But on the other hand, you can also say he's not running into space in the way that you might if you're, say, a mid-level yeah. Premier League side. He's constantly coming up against teams who expect to lose to Leicester. Yeah. Well, that that's not a bad not a bad kind of training for coming up against Premier League defenses. I would yeah. say. Um, I think it's very interesting, and also Sporting have had crazy success, obviously, with the signing of Jokeres, who has been like a revelation. They're one of the best players in the entire league out of the Championship. So, like, maybe they're thinking now. No. Championship is a place to send players, to buy players from, to come in and immediately complete at, compete at the top end of the league and notch. Championship is like a really interesting proving ground now. I think there's a lot of, there are a lot of times where you want to, you may prefer to send your, say you're a team at the top of the Premier League and you want to loan out one of your players. You may now be better off loaning that player out to a top championship side than a low premier league mm. side yes because kind of agree. because they'll actually get training in the style that you expect rather than you know low blocks, low blocks. Yeah. and also managers who maybe are like i might lose my job if we lose yeah. this game so i can't play the 18 year old yeah, in the championship leicester it's such a long season you know it's such a long season 
and they're so dominant that he will get a ton of minutes. So by the end of the year, unless he gets injured, he'll almost certainly have 2,000 minutes, mm. which is suddenly a really good way to gauge that player rather than, oh, well, he got 900 minutes in the Premier League, but 900 minutes playing for a low block side. Yeah. It does feel like I could make a lot of money off him as well. Sporting, sales, out of Portugal. Yeah, he's clearly not going to stay at Sporting agent forever. Fees. It's just not going to happen. Is there any even agent fees to be had? I have a 10-year contract that's already been signed, Zach. I, like, I think it's a good player pick. Come on. But, hey, Jesus yeah. Christ, this kid is ridiculous. Yeah, but oh, you wanted to recommend 16. him before he went to Chelsea. He's 16. Okay. Uh, all right, look. You haven't had a point yet. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna to throw you a bone. Um, so I'm going with Zach's. I've... The this name. always Kennedy comes down. Is it? Kendry, Kendry, Kendry Payers. This Kendry always Pires? comes down Pires, from us rather. just finding one of the kids. So then we do it on the show. It's like, oh yeah, these are actually one of the kids that I'm get, trying to sell on for. It's yeah. never that when we're doing the research. Well, it's always well, suddenly well, on the day. It's like, uh, oh, right, let's crack on with some of the old questions for Patrick Van Straat, and you've been sending me. Well, they just all um, for me. Well, most of them. Yeah, oh, man. God. Like, I don't really give a shit what Zach's thinking right now. Uh, no offense, I love you, Jalab, but this one's about you, Pat. <laughs> oh my god. Um, okay, Chris the Butters. Chris says, the Butters. Yeah. What are you going to miss most about working with Football Daily? Um, it is a really relaxed place to work, you know? Mm. I would say that there... I mean, it, this has not always been the case, but I've had jobs where, like, on a Sunday, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I can't face it tomorrow because the office is, like, really an oppressive place to be. You know, like, when you're in an office where it's really silent yeah. and um, everybody thinks that their work is, like, the most important thing that's ever happened when clearly it isn't. Yeah. Like, I feel like at Football Daily, generally speaking, people are pretty chill. Um, you could just get into conversation. The reason that in the early days, I think we all became super knowledgeable is because we'd have arguments about football in the office. Yeah. Mm. And... We would have ridiculous parties, which looking back on it were probably quite <laughs> a bad idea, but but they were fun. And I don't know, like, I, I don't really have any like beef with my colleagues. I don't really have yeah. an unpleasant time at work. It's always pretty chill. So so that probably is what I'll miss, having uh, a nice time with the people I work with. Yeah. Aww. Okay. Uh, this one from Wancy. Sorry again. Mm. Uh, it says, given mm. that you are a self-declared bad-tempered individual, mm -hmm. what grinds your gears the most, brackets, especially in the office? We're not really in the office together enough to, be, to get no, annoyed. Not anymore. Anyway. Yeah, Though not I, anymore. Back in the day. I would say there are a lot of there are a lot of trundlers in the office. Like yesterday, there were people just there are always people just standing around having pointless conversations in your way, so you can't get off the lift, you can't walk down the corridor because they're standing around like waving their lanyards at each what other. What about back in the you day? You used to hate Joe's uh, house music being played at like eight thirty in the morning. No, no, actually, I didn't mind it because oh, at, really? at least it had no lyrics. When you're writing, oh yeah, 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 lyrics yeah, yeah, yeah. are like yeah, 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 are, yeah, yeah, are the right, absolute bang. devil. So right, That's when yeah, people when would put on their it, yeah. crap like grime, and I'd have to sit there listening to like this terrible music while trying to finish a paragraph, while people are shouting, like having an <laughs> argument about football yeah. across the room. Then I would just be like, "Can everyone shut?" Overstimulate. And also what I didn't like is when I'd go to the gym for two hours and everyone would be like, you've been at the gym for two hours. And I'd be like, leave me alone. <laughs> like, so what? Mm. Is my is my script done? Yes, it is. So let me go next time I'll go to the gym for three hours. He's a, don't, don't, don't be such a don't be such a little randall. Yeah. I mean narc on me for enough, going to the gym. Do some work, you know? Well, I did do some work. Mm. I've uh, written thousands of words. For how, many, how, how many how many written? How many players as well do you think you've written about? Um, do you think thousands? I'd say do you I think write, you're in thousands? I write somewhere. Surely. Yeah, probably. I, think I reckon thousands. you're in I mean, we've done like three today alone. Yeah, true, I, yeah. Yeah, no. Definitely. <laughs> Henry thinks he's written a million words. No. Oh, words? Yeah, yeah. he's probably I'd say I write about, about 1,500 a day. Like, at, le a day. at least three days a week. And in the early days, it was more Fun. than that. <laughs> so, so then you're looking at. Do you like, remember the early days, right? You're, you're looking at seven to 10,000 words a week and probably like 45 weeks of the year. Like, yeah. Considering now as well. And like, for eight years, yeah. Probably like several million words. Wow. Yeah, no, definitely. Okay. Considering as well, if you think about None it. None of them good. When, uh, seriously bad. None like, of them worth, like of them worth the like effort. Like nowadays, if you were to do a script, like how long do you get on it? You get like two days now, isn't it? Yeah, two Roughly. Days. Do you remember like back in the day, honestly? Script down the same day. Script, edit the same day. And sometimes you'd have, day, do, you'd, have do a, you'd have to do one whole script and a half in one day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. I remember that. Vividly. Ralph has the next one. He says, now that you're leaving, is football more exciting? Writing just as a fan Ooh. or as a writer slash content creator? Oh, as a fan, definitely. 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 No doubt. Absolutely, 100%. It's, it becomes content like when you when you do it as a job. And also you're forced to engage with stories that you wouldn't normally. So during like 
so we all hate it. We were all so relieved when Paul Pogba left Man United because we would literally have to talk about him yeah. 10 times a year and we'd have to cover it every time people were like, oh, you know, apparently he's not training very well or like someone's criticised his haircut or whatever. Like you'd have to talk about this stuff. Whereas normally as a like rational human being, you'd be like, why would I ever get engaged yeah. in that conversation? Well, we actually have to do that. We have to go and learn learn about, um, I don't know, like the the shady dealings of all the disgusting people who own football clubs. Mm. Like, whereas as a fan, you can know enough, but you don't have to like really investigate yeah. it. So after a while, like, I, I don't know how people do it. This is not a dig at you. <laughs> but I don't know how people do it where like, they are presenters, for example, who focus exclusively on one club. Chelsea. You don't know, focus I don't, yeah. exclusively. I don't think I, I, I think I've always but tried to work. make sure I'm not solely just Chelsea. Yeah, but there I are agree. people you work with who like, it's only ever Chelsea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think if you, just, channels. if you just cover one club, oh, I, I don't nuts. know how you stay sane. I know. Oh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think it's no surprise that some of those people, like, let's not name any names, yeah, but, but um, like, <laughs> I, I think it, I, that. I, and everyone who ever writes about Arsenal, I think it's no surprise that these people lose their minds yeah. because they talk about one club all the time and little by little. It and that's one you of mad. the things that I've always thought as well with Football Daily. Like, people have always said before, like, would you like to just do Chelsea or whatever? And I've always thought, like, no, because no. I, it's so much more interesting being able to talk about you know, other clubs, not even just the Premier League clubs. When you look at the Liga, when you look at Liga and. But so, it yeah. is just much better watching like, it as a fan. Then yeah, like at, at some stage, do you, yeah, but do you think you'd work. watch as much football if you weren't working in football? No, uh, no. well, I, I, I my, the amount of football I watch now is determined by like family yeah, yeah, commitments, yeah, yeah. But in the early days, like, no, but then you also discover new stuff. Like, sometimes there are new players who you see and you're just yeah. like, oh, this is sick, or like, yeah, 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 you yeah. are just more invested. Like, when you watch, if you, if you only watch your club. Then when it comes to say a Champions League night, if your club isn't playing or if there isn't like a huge matchup, you know, like between like Bayern and Barcelona mm. or something, you're kind of like, oh, wh what game am I going to watch? Whereas if you're interested in lots of clubs and lots of players, then suddenly a match like RB Leipzig versus Young, young Inter or something yeah. might be more interesting to you because you actually know about those players, you know how those teams play, you know what's going on in their respective leagues. It becomes mm. like more exciting. But yeah, definitely, I think hobbies are always more fun than jobs so, yeah so yeah. when football's a hobby it's more fun than a job agreed uh party yeah. boy uh says have you ever had any takes where the rest of the fd crew has said that this can't make the video yes. and if so how many takes literally yesterday <laughs> like, <laughs> literally probably in this video there will have been one in this video yesterday i completely derailed continental club by uh talking about all the players that should be in prison <laughs> And um, it was a lot. It was double figures. Yeah. And I was right about every one. Um, yeah. So believe it or not, we aren't actually allowed to say this player should be in prison, that player should be in prison. <laughs> yeah. But rest assured, they should all be in prison. Yeah. I would um, I would say probably two or three a week. No, I'm not on that many, not that many no, things. Back yeah. in the day, maybe, though. Oh, yeah. Well, when I would <laughs> say, like, really so-and-so is, like, a useless <laughs> Or, like, yeah. uh, you know, I wouldn't... Like, is this player someone's cousin that yeah. he's, like, allowed to play football? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had to write this weekend about this week about Leicester and I had to say nice things about Harry Winks and I thought, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> I've had some opinions on this guy over the years, which were all correct. He's now at a level that suits him, the championship. Uh, okay, probably going to cut that out. Who knows? I think that's fine. Yeah, that's uh, maybe. Right. That's fine. Uh, What's he going to do? Next up, we've got a baddie who says, Ooh. where can we expect to see Pat in the future? Ooh. Nowhere, bro. Like, I'm, I'm going Plug to... The podcast oh mate. okay yeah yeah i do do a podcast <laughs> called unseen incidents uh with xfd icon pete dorman um so yeah you can subscribe to that you we do two episodes a month that are free and then we do another two episodes that are paid so you subscribe at our patreon.com slash patrick vs and you get access to those um and you can submit questions mm -hmm. and stuff so that's where if you want to see my football takes like that's probably going to be the only place unless you know Maybe, maybe I'll maybe I'll work with you guys a bit down the road. Who knows? Something mm. else might happen. But um, the plan is broadly to leave football behind. There you go. Uh, Ahmed says, what's been your proudest footballing prediction at Football Daily? I literally don't know. No. Oh, what player was could it? Be a Aubameyang? Could be a team Aubameyang or a player's contract. trajectory. 
I think Aubameyang Arsenal contract, Pat was one of the only yeah, actually, people mm, do, saying yes. don't give him the 300k a week. Do not give him the and contract. And you got stick for it Everybody massively. Everybody hammered you. And then oh, I don't I, I didn't came, read the comments, so I didn't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You came up and looked like an absolute don. Yeah. Um, uh, but again, I, I feel like the people I follow on Twitter were sort of mm, agreeing with that. Like, like w- I guess you follow the people who tend to have similar kind yeah. of ideas to you. Echo so like I, it wasn't like I didn't really feel like I was sticking my neck out on that, but um, I don't know, man. Like it's really hard to say. Like inevitably, because you cover so many players, you make so many. Mm. You, I, 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 be, I think I've learned not really to make predictions anymore, but to say this is something you might want to watch. Okay. Rather than you know say like this player cannot step up to that level, you say well the, we we're yet to see evidence he can do it. And I also think that's the way you should look at it because sometimes a player just like takes the leap. Yeah. You know, like N'Golo Conte, for example, when he was at Leicester and there was a rumor he was going to go to a big club, at the time it was like, well, what we don't know is whether he's a good enough passer for a big club. Now, if you look back on that now, then you would say that's a stupid opinion. But at the time, I don't think it was a stupid mm. opinion. I don't think it was a stupid opinion at all. You were saying, we don't know. Mm. Like, that, those comments tend to get interpreted by fans as like us saying he definitely can't yeah, yeah, as yeah. opposed to we'll see. Yeah. Um, so I think over the years, I've got more careful about do you not how think I as phrase well, predictions. Do you not think as well over the last few years, like football content creation has become such a, like, this is that. And yeah, like people, and people engage with it in a way of like, you were wrong and I am right. Or so on, or the other way around, whatever it might be. Yeah. And because of that, it like then comes onto other content where you're not saying that, but people will take it that way every yeah. single time. Yeah, it's kind of nice when like you know I say something about like Aston Villa's recruitment when they came up a couple of years ago. Mm. So they were crap, and Villa fans went mental, and then I was right. Or uh, when I <laughs> said happen. something about Wolves recruitment, like not this summer, just gone, but the one before, and Wolves fans went mental, and I was right. Like that, those things are quite gratifying when people are giving you stick, and then you're like how your club might get relegated. <laughs> like, shut the f*** up. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's always quite gratifying. But like, honestly, it's like, who cares, man? You know? Uh, what, the one thing I will say is that none of my opinions that were controversial were ever said for clicks. Whereas I do find that there yeah. are a lot of people on Twitter who yeah, are just yeah, like, yeah. oh, you know, he's going to score Sorry. three goals this season. Yeah. And they're doing it so that people engage them and they can get like Elon's dirty money. But like, like at least th- I don't think people on our channel do that. I'd like to think with Football Daily, we've never done that. No, I don't think we've we never gone like, oh, we're going to do this. We've got to say this because it's got to be the, the title. We're going to try and say that this play is bad because it's this title. Like, I think Hot Takes maybe got a little bit close to, to, to that at oh, times. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but it was never it was never like us going into a video and we're going to say this that we don't believe, but we're going to, you yeah, know, to get create more people. controversy. Yeah, yeah. we well, don't feel like we ever wish, you know, might say what half our other takes mean, but um, yeah. Uh, next one. What was the most iconic night out investor? So it'd be absolutely unrepeatable. Um, <laughs> I don't know because a lot of the parties have kind of melded into one in my yeah, mind. I know what you mean. But like, I mean, the ha- the Halloween party, the James Wayne Halloween party yeah. was pretty manic. Um, yeah, well, yes, that's a good shout. We've honestly had so many, like the parties we used to have at our old office were diabolical. I think we should, yeah, and also just probably shouldn't be said I mean, like a lot of things that oh, went definitely, on. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, best before this is a football where I want. At your time at Football Daily, what's the best performance you've ever seen by a player? What, just like in live, that time? Live, oh, live. Oh, live. I don't watch a lot of live football. What about the Messi hat trick? Yeah, it'd the be camp? the Messi hat trick. But I feel like I've talked about this a hundred yeah. times. Like, but yeah, it would What about be... from an FD member? From an FD member? <laughs> that we've played football. That I've seen live. <laughs> uh, George Wright in the cage. Yeah. Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Ash. Ash used to be lethal in the cage. Yeah, he did actually. I don't know, man. Like... Yeah. I wasn't there live, but I always think of your little step over. That little oh, the uh, Irish jig. Yeah, when you invented a skill. <laughs> yeah. like, that's, that's pretty amazing. Uh, final question then for Pat. In Sunday Vibes history, who's the one player you want to succeed as a guilty pleasure? One player I want to succeed as a guilty pleasure? So not an Arsenal player. There's somebody maybe that you want to see in the Premier League do really well. Who do I want to see do really, really well? Who would I love to see succeed? There are those players you just love, you know. Mm. Um, I really, I actually really hope that Jeremy Doku. Doku, mm, yeah. I spoke about for a while. Yeah, he's, him. Well, even last night, he was given the ball on the wing and allowed to take on a defender. And I was like, when was the last time I saw a Man City winger where they were like, here's the ball, run at the defender. Yeah. It never happens. It's always a lot more, in my opinion, boring. Um, 
And I think I there is a part of me, and I think there's probably a part of all of us who grew up in a particular generation of yeah. football, um, who are most excited by seeing like somebody take on a winger, like take on a defender with a bit of like trickery and pace. Mm. That is so exciting. And so I would really, if Jeremy Doku ends up being like a kind of nailed on starter for Man City, playing that way, mm. that would be really, really cool, I think. Okay. Jeremy Doku, what a way to end it for Patrick Van Strat's time on Sunday Vibes. If you haven't already, make sure you go and subscribe on his Patreon to his podcast. Pay me money. Pay him cash. Uh, Zach Jalab, <laughs> you okay? It. Wrapping it up there? Yeah, not bad. Okay, there <laughs> we go. We're going to wrap it up there. Uh, thanks very much for watching, everybody. Send your goodbyes to Pato in the comments below. We'll see you later. Bye. Thanks, guys. Beautiful. Emotional. Let's do that slow life. Uh, Can you, uh, you walk away and patch? No, let's do can you, I want to be on the thumb, but like in front of the pearly gates, <laughs> just like I'm dead.